Hi guys, uh, and I'm um, in my kitchen uh, this evening. It's the end of October, and that means it's time for a good old fashioned unboxing. Um, basically, I need to get ready for my winter fishing. Uh, judging by the size of this box, it, it looks like I've been a little bit optimistic in terms of the amount of fishing I'm hoping to get in. But if I do get out there, in this box is some of the stuff that I will be using. So uh, let's open it up and see what the postman has delivered today. Okay, so first thing, five kilos of Nash Instant Action Candy Nut Crush Boilies. Another five kilos of Nash Instant Action Candy Nut Crush Boilies. I don't think for a second I'm going to use 10 kilos over the winter, but hey ho, I've got them ready just in case. What else? Oh. Five kilos of Nash Instant Action Squid and Krill Boilies this time. Buy two, get one free on those. So paid for two, got three um, for the price of two, which, uh, which seems like a really good deal to me. Also got, just trying it out for the first time, a little bag of the Nash Instant Action Stick Mix, because I like to use those little PVA mesh, um, mesh sticks um, on, my, uh, on my hook links to kind of mask the hook point for the cast and uh, that will help me construct a whole load more of those hopefully just a kilo bag but it wasn't expensive so i thought i'd pop that on it on the end of the order as well along with a little tiny tub of um candy nut crush pop-ups um from nash bait as well um the idea behind this is i'm hoping to use um or start using the ever so famous Ronnie rig or um, spinner rig. I've taken some tips on board from you guys after the last time I attempted to use that rig, um, particularly around the type of hook that I use and how to set up the rig. And I'm gonna take some of those on board and have another go at, um, at the um, ever popular Ronnie rig because I've heard so many good things about it and so many of you guys have recommended I try it. Um, so, or, or give it another try at least. So I'm gonna give it a go. So I've got my little tub of um, Candy Nut Crush pop-ups for a match the hatch style presentation, I suppose. Um, I've got some brighter and um, different flavored um, pop-ups that I could use um, if I wanted to, but I figured that having a tub of these um, in my arsenal wouldn't be a bad idea. So I've got those as well. It's not over yet. Also got a little bottle of the candy nut crush flavored plume juice which um, i suppose is a little bit like the nash bait equivalent of goo although it's quite liquidy quite runny so um, from what i can see there again first time we're getting this too but um, as i understand it i can drizzle some of that over those pop-ups that i just showed you and uh, boost the attraction enhance the attraction of those with a matching flavor just because it was going cheap, I also got another one of those little um, booster juice um, booster juice pots. Um, this time of the um, squid and krill flavour to go with the squid and krill boilies. So that's the end of the box. They didn't even throw in a free gift. You see, gutted. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's a whole load of bait and. Um, bait additions uh, ready for the winter season and it's going to take me through into the into the new year as well I'm, I'm sure um, so that's the unboxing for today let's hope some of this stuff at least catches me a few carp
uh, welcome to Adam's Fishing. It's a Sunday morning and the weather is actually glorious, which is surprising because we've had a lot of very heavy rain lately. But today it's dry, sun's out, etc. Unfortunately, I haven't got the time to go fishing, um, but I have got the time to have a look at some rigs um, in response to some of the great feedback that I've had from you guys following my last session where I suffered those two hook calls on the bounce. Um, a lot of you have come up with suggestions and ideas to um, improve those rigs and improve the hook holds and so forth. So I'm going to be looking at a couple of things this morning. Um, obviously there were loads of different ideas from you guys and some of those ideas were conflicting. Um, so I'm not going to try and change loads of things all at once. Instead I'm going to try and make um, a small change, try it out and then maybe make another change and try it out and so on and so forth because otherwise I'm never going to know what has worked and what hasn't worked if that kind of makes sense. One of the things I'm definitely going to try and do this morning is make up a spinner or a Ronnie rig um, which I'm going to use um, throughout the winter months um, to see if I can trip up one of those lovely carp down on my quiet lake. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is look at using a smaller hook bait. Still want to go for the snowman sort of presentation and the snowman mechanics and so forth because I'm really confident in that. But I do kind of understand where you guys are coming from when you're saying that a smaller bait is just a bit more subtle, number one. Number two, the fish can suck it into its mouth further and better, more easily. And, uh, and those ideas really do sort of make sense to me. Now, it's not to say I haven't had success on the rig as it is, because I have, of course, but if there's improvements that I can make, then definitely I'm going to make them. Um, one of the other things that you guys said in abundance was sharp hooks. Make sure those hooks are super, super sharp. So um, I can do that um, by using, you know, brand new hooks and maybe even considering sharpening them. I'm not going to go down that line just yet because there's a bit of an art to that and getting it right. Um, but I'm going to use super, super sharp hooks um, from the packet, pinpoint hooks, um, they're called from Nash. And um, I'm going to carry on with those and just make sure I'm using the best ones I can find. Um, especially as the bites start to get fewer and further between um, as we come into winter. If I'm going to catch a fish, um, I definitely want it to stay on until I get it in the net. Um, sometimes you just lose fish and that's understandable, but if I can stack the odds in my favour, then that's something I definitely need to do. So let's have a look at what I've got to work with. Um, well, number one, I've got a piece of white paper in front of me just so that hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Um, I've got my tackle box, my large tackle box, which tends to come with me on every fishing session, to be honest. There's way more in there than I could ever possibly need on a fishing session, but it's just one place to keep everything. For those that are interested, it's actually a Plano, or a Plano, I think it's Plano tackle box, which primarily are a sea fishing brand, I believe. This could well be a sea fishing tackle box for all I know, but I really like it. It's got this large compartment um, at the top for all of the stuff that's just too big to fit into the trays. And then below there, we've got this flap down part, which reveals two trays. So the top tray has got my um, lightweight stuff in, boiling needles, boiling stops, hooks, floss, um, that kind of thing. And the bottom tray is where I keep my heavy stuff, my feeders, my leads, um, my shots and all of that kind of stuff as well as all in there as well. So within this box is everything I need to create the rigs um, that I'm going to be trying to create this morning. The other thing that I've got with me of course are my um, rig wallets. So um, here's my barbless rig wallet um, and in there I've had a bit of a tidy up and I've just got um, the rigs that I am going to be using. So I did have a lot of mm, a lot of clutter in here, a lot of rigs that I was probably never actually going to get any use out of. So I've cleared that out and these are the rigs that I'll be taking down to um, the lake that requires barbless hooks um, when I need to. Now I had already tied these up before your great ideas and suggestions so they have got long hairs on so they are going to be on my, my good old fashioned snowman rig as you will have seen time and time again. But going forward, as these are used, and they will get used, and they will get blunt, and they will need to be chucked out fairly quickly, pretty much as soon as you catch a fish, one of these hooks, it, it has to go, because the hook point turns over. So I'll go through those in no time, and then I'll look at using that shorter hair and that smaller hook bait that we talked about at the beginning. But that's my barbless rigs. <clears throat> in here are my micro barbed rigs. And again, I've had a good clear out. There's a lot of clutter in here before and I don't need it all. So again, I've just got, I think there's seven, yeah, I think I had seven left of my good old snowman rigs with the long hair. So again, I am going to use these, but perhaps, um, 
perhaps they can hang around for a while until the weather starts to get better and I can go on to those shorter hairs for the winter sessions on, um, on the quiet lake. So I have got a few rigs already tied up in there which will get used um, but as you guys have suggested I'm going to try for the shorter hair and a slightly smaller hook bait. Um, so that's one of the rigs that I'm going to be tying. Also on the micro barb side of things it's these that I'm going to try um, tying up the Ronnie rigs. Um, and I'll talk to you all about the components that I've chosen for that in just a moment. Um, obviously, they're just my ideas, they're just what I've decided to use. There are a million and one different ways of tying up these rigs, so please don't take my word for it. You know, Do your own research and, and find out what you need to find out to make the rigs as best as you can. Um, and uh, that's what I'm going to be having a look at doing next. Let's have a look at the components that I'm going to be using for this Ronnie rig then. Um, for a start, um, I should point out I haven't got any of these super stiff fluorocarbon um, sort of uh, hook link material. So I'm going to use up some of this um, N-trap semi-stiff. Um, it is actually pretty stiff once steamed. Um, and I think in terms of the mechanics, it'll be nearly as good as using um, the sort of fluorocarbon or mono um, hook link material that you guys have suggested. So just because I've got it, I'm going to use it. Um, I've also got here um, in this little um, container, I've got some um, hook beads, um, which I'm going to need for the rig. In these little tubs here, I've got some kickers from Corda, and I've got some Ronnie swivels here as well, which I'm going to be using. I've got an anti-tangle sleeve, um, of course, which is going to be at the other end of the rig um, in order to attach it to the lead clip system. And I've got these Gardner covert dark mugger size 6 micro barbed hooks um, purely on recommendations from you guys really more of you recommended these hooks than any other for this particular rig and i kind of gone with it i nipped out and bought myself a pack um, to me they look absolutely huge because i'm not used to using hooks in a size 6 um, but i can certainly see where that hooking potential is because i've got a really wide gape and a nice very sharp looking straight point um, before the barb, so um, these are going to be um, the hook of choice for this particular Ronnie rig. So the next stage is to start cutting things up and getting things out and start actually constructing something. Okay, so I'm not at all sure how long I want this um, hook link material to be, but as a starting point I'm going to try with starting out with 10 inches of this coated braid material. tie everything up and then see how it looks in the end and then I can always go longer or shorter for the remainder um, as we go through. So um, next thing that I'm going to need I believe is one of these um, Ronnie rig swivels. There we go, that's the corder one there that I've chosen to use, hopefully you can see that little thing. I'm going to tie it on using my favourite knot, um, which is a Palomar knot. Of course, I've got to be careful not to use too much of the material here because um, I want to keep some length to the rig.
Okay, stage one, done. All right, stage two is to attach one of these hooks. And as hopefully you can see, I've taken one of the hooks and um, I've threaded on one of these kickers from Corda, which I'm going to use to cover the uh, Ronnie Rig swivel um, as I thread this onto the onto that. So here we go. Quite a large eye on this hook, so a little bit tricky pulling this uh, kicker down. About there, I think. So I'm going to need um, something to attach the actual hook bait with, um, which is going to slide along the shank of the hook here, and a hook bead to keep that something in place. Um, what I'm going to be using is a um, threaded um, bait uh, bait spike um, in order to attach that pop up. So uh, that's the next stage. All right, so bait screw going on. Following that up with a hook bead. I'm very careful not to stab myself because that is a very sharp hook. there we have it. I have um, a little bit more to do which is attaching the uh, anti-tangle sleeve to this end and then I can straighten the whole thing out and we can all have a look at it close up and see, uh, and see how it looks. There we have it, finished Ronnie rig, or my version of it anyway. Um, for me, that's come out a little bit shorter in terms of the length of the hook link than I would have liked. Let's have a look, we're talking about uh, just under seven inches um, of hook link there. So I might go up, might go up half an inch or an inch um, for the rest of these, um, but I'm pretty happy with the way that looks um, and the way it's worked out. I'm gonna test it in my kitchen sink um, and just check um, what kind of counterbalance weight I'm going to need here to hold down the pop-ups that I'm going to be using. So um, join me over at the sink after I've steamed this rig straight. All right, ladies and gents, well, here is the finished rig. Steamed straight. Hopefully you can see the business end there. What we've got set up. I'm going to attach um, my hook bait for choice which is going to be a candy nut crush pop-up which has been sort of glugged gooed um, for quite a while now um, and see how it reacts when the rig hits the water. Alright so this is with no, uh, no counterbalance, no weight on at all. As expected the pop-up pulls the whole rig up to the surface 
So I'm going to need to have some counterweight on there. I'm quite pleased with the little vapour trail coming off of that boilie though, I must say. That's really cool. Anyway, let's add some weight and then see how it reacts. Alright, so here's the new plan. I've added a uh, BB shot there where I guess some of you guys would add putty. Um, I don't have any putty, number one. And number two, I find it really fiddly. So I'm just using a split shot here, which I've squeezed um, onto the hook link. So let's see how this goes. Aha. Now we're talking. That hook is sat over just like a claw. Um, which is exactly what I want and it is sat on the deck with the pop-up just maybe what is that an inch three quarters of an inch um, off the lake bed that's going to be just about perfect I think I'm going to whip up a few more of these um, and then perhaps make a couple of hair rigs as well um, ready for the winter season <laughs> it for the famous Ronnie rig. I've got uh, five in my rig wallet now, um, more than enough. Um, hooks are razor sharp, I can attest to that because I stabbed myself quite a few times, um, but they're all still nice and sharp and they're in the rig wallet ready to be used, which is great. Just to finish off my little bit of rig tying this morning um, before I need to crack on with dad duty and so forth, I'm just going to tie up a couple of those um, slightly shorter haired um, hair rigs for my smaller, more compact snowman rig, um, which hopefully will just trip up those uh, difficult to catch or difficult to hook carp that I'm missing. So first thing I need to do is look at the bait that I'm using. Um, I'm going to be persevering this winter with my candy nut crush boilies and my little manila pop-ups. But rather than using these whole at your suggestion or some of your suggestion, I'm going to trim them down for a slightly neater bait. So I'm going to be needing my uh, knife. It's looking a bit rusty now actually. I'm just going to take off a percentage, if you like, of the top of that boilie. And likewise I'm going to take off a bit of the pop-up. And then my idea is going to be to have the two smushed together thusly and uh, that is an altogether smaller bait. It's probably overall a third smaller than what I've been fishing with. Um, so obviously that's going to need a slightly shorter hair in order that it presents properly. So I'm going to tie up a rig using this bait as my, as my guide I suppose. Okay so this rig's very familiar to me. I know how much of this coated braid I want to measure out. I'm going to start with 13 inches. And then I'm going to be stripping back just over four inches of that. Make sure I've measured that right. Yeah, that looks good. Now what I'm going to need to do is um, thread on a very small length of um, hook tubing and uh, one of my little gummy float stops. So I'll just get those out of the box and I'll show you that. Okay, first up, you might be able to see here this little tiny speck. That's a little teeny tiny section of um, silicone hook tube which I'm actually going to thread onto the stripped part of the coated braid first. Okay. Ah, there we go. 
it was a little bit tangled up, but I managed to resolve that. And then taking one of my little gummy float stops. The idea of that is that it helps me to hold the two baits together. Excuse the noise in the background, the car going past. Then I'm going to tie my loop for my hair. Which I've got there. Okay, next thing I'm going to thread on this bait. This trimmed down version of my old faithful snowman rig. Tip that off with a boily stop, which are here. Okay, now I've got to grab a hook and not let's knot it on and get that hair length just about right. Alright, so there's my hook of choice. It's a Fang X size 7 micro barbed. I'm going to thread that on, knotless knot style. But before I do so, I'm going to thread over that piece of um, that piece of hook tubing, which is a little bit fiddly. I think I have succeeded. Okay, it's now that I can set the length of this hair to what I want it to be. And I'm going to say that I want it to be such that that snowman bait touches the underside of the hook but can't actually go past, if you like, the underside of the hook. So something along these lines, I think will do me. Apologies for the camera. So I'm going to whip that on with a six turn knotless knot. One, two, three, four, five and six. And then back through the back of the eye of the hook. Pull it up nice and tight. There's about just under a centimeter of stripped braid behind the hook. And then the rest, of course, is coated braid. And hopefully we can see here nearly the finished rig. I'm going to obviously attach an anti-tangle sleeve to this end and tie an overhand loop. But if I bring the camera down, I'll show you that uh, as a little bit of a close up. OK, so there's the close up of the shorter hair snowman rig with a smaller bait. And I agree that I think that might just get me a better hook hold and enable me to land those fish during the winter months. So I'm gonna tie up a few of these and uh, then they'll be ready to fish with. This one needs to be finished off. It needs, a, um, it needs an anti-tangle sleeve and overhand loop at this end and then to be straightened out with the kettle but apart from that, it's pretty much done. I'm gonna make up a few of these, pop them in the old rig wallet, and I'm ready to rock. Okay guys, there we go. Um, six of those new and improved snowman hair rigs made up and ready to go. Um, you'll notice the hair is about a third shorter than on my other um, snowman rigs. And that's because the bait overall is about a third of the size, uh, sorry, not a third of the size, a third smaller. Um, the rigs themselves are shorter as well. Again, responding to um, overwhelming feedback from you guys that those rigs being perhaps slightly too long was another contributing factor to me losing those fish. So um, I've tried to shorten the hook links a little bit as well. Um, so overall, it's a shorter rig. 
Um, last thing I'm going to do is just test that that trimmed down snowman bait sinks um, and balances out in the same way as it does when I leave the baits whole um, because that's really important to me as well. So I'm going to use my test tank, aka the kitchen sink, and uh, just have a quick test of that and then I'm happy and I'll put all my gear away ready for next time I'm going to go fishing. Alright, moment of truth. Does my new and improved snowman rig sink and balance in the same way as the old one did? In a word, yes. It has sunk and the, uh, the snowman itself it's just ever so slightly popped off of the deck, which is um, exactly how I like it to be. So uh, that's a success. These rigs are ready for use.